Okay, let's start. Hi, everyone. Sorry, my voice is not clear, so, but hopefully I'm not alo alone, so really, let's go. So we will talk about porting Tizen common to open source hardware devices. This is a community effort, and uh, we've done this for maybe one year now, two years. So first, when we explain what is Tizen common and what is open source hardware, and we'll show you two showcases about uh, using uh, this operating system on different uh, hardware. So if you don't know about Tizen, the specific of the project, because Tizen aims to be the heroes of everything. It, is, uh, it has been designed for the third version of Tizen that there is a common base known as uh, Tizen Common, and from each base you can create different products, in which is we, we call them profiles. This means you don't have the same feature in a mobile phone or on, on a TV. And uh, at this time, Tizen Common doesn't have some special profile logic inside it. This is just a common uh, base. And uh, for instance, Tizen AVI is using 80% uh, of uh, Tizen Common. And the 10% are the AVI uh, packages, special packages. <coughs> okay, and there are also other profile of using it. What, you sh what is important for this talk is that uh, we, Tizen Common, is supposed to have a long term support, so you're using LTSI kernel. This is a high version, but we try to stick it. And it we have some uh, feature enabled in it. This is a security feature. And uh, the system is uh, for several architectures um, and several uh, config display configuration. We have a hex 11 and a Wayland. AVI is using Wayland, for instance. So we want to provide accelerated graphics also on both system and uh, provide a, um, architecture for running uh, applications. That's what Kevin just explained before. And it's an inclusive platform. This means you can add any kind of uh, libraries or toolkit you want to add, it would support it. But it's not provided by the platform. And what is open source hardware? It's, uh, if you, I'm sure most of you know what is it. But if you compare to open source software, it's quite similar. But um, you have some special um, things about the ability to create yourself open source hardware. This means you need the tools, because if you have the source, you should be able to, to, pro to make uh, the, your things. So sometimes it can be difficult, because it's a, it's a tough process. Why should um, uh, I use open source hardware or focus on it? Because as a, since uh, same as open source software, um, you can just uh, customize something which has been done before and focus about uh, your special feature and not reinventing the wheel every day. And of course, there is a community who is giving you early feedback about uh, the, the device and uh, you can fix bug and maybe uh, share the effort about making it running well. And uh, last item, making running uh, open source software on open source hardware is making sense. If you want uh, to have a system, you can ensure it will work and uh, do nothing in your back. So let's give the talk to Leon now. Okay, so we have three showcases for you. Uh, two of these showcases are about ARM and one is about Intel. I'll share some details regarding the showcases uh, related to uh, ARM. Uh, can you give me the no, sure. first thing? Okay. So the first showcase is about Sunxi devices. Sunxi devices are devices that has system on a chip manufactured by the Chinese company O-Winner. Um, Sunxi has a, Lin a Linux Sunxi is the name of the community uh, which tries to support uh, kernel versions and bootloaders for these devices with O-Winner's uh, system on a chip. Approximately a year and a half ago, I started um, my efforts to port Tizen to these type of devices. Um, today, with uh, the assistance of uh, Philip, we have Tizen Common running on several devices. Here is the list of these devices. Uh, the A10 processors uh, are single core system on chip processors with Mali GPU. So the first board that we, um, uh, the first board on which we ported Tizen was A10S or Linuxino micro, uh, this uh, uh, system on a chip is already deprecated. So here is the list of the boards that we support. 
Uh, these boards are manufactured in Bulgaria, and I'm really proud about this because I'm also from Bulgaria. And uh, Tsvetan over there is the owner of the Olimax company who are making these boards. These are open source hardware boards. You can find a lot of uh, devices with Owinner systems on a chip, but Olimax is making open source hardware devices, which is especially important for community things. So uh, the boards that you see here are with A10 and A20 uh, systems on a chip. We have Tizen working on them. Uh, this is uh, my personally favorite board, A20 Olinoxino Micro. Uh, you can visit the, the GitHub page. There are some tutorials there, as well as uh, links to download images. You can flash these images on a micro SD card plug the, the micro SD card into the board and get it running really quickly. Um, the new devices that Owinner, uh, systems on the chip that Owinner uh, creates are A33, A80, and A83. Uh, we have them in mind. Uh, if you remember, yesterday, at the beginning of the first day, Hans explained the status of the Linux Sungsi project. Uh, the Linux Sungsi project is essential for the porting efforts of Tizen as well because we are le relying on the Linux kernel which is available for these boards. At the moment, the kernel version is 3.4 and we are using U-Boot. Um, as, I, as, as, as I already said, uh, there are images that you can download, uh, flash to a micro SD card and directly use. But if you want to build an, an image from scratch, these are the general steps that you have to perform. So the first thing is to get a, a bootloader. Um, luckily, the uh, U-bootloader uh, is compatible with these devices, and at the moment, the mainline uh, U-bootloader can be used. After that, you have to clone the Linux Sungsi kernel. This is a fork of the standard uh, Linux kernel, which is available for Sungsi devices. Um, there, there are a few things that you have to keep in mind. One of the things is that uh, these devices are not using uh, regular device trees. They are using fact files, fax files, which are conver converted to binary files, but they have the same uh, row j just like as the device trees. Um, once you have built the, the bootloader and the kernel, the next steps are related to building Tizen. So uh, there are multiple, there are a couple of ways to, to build Tizen. Uh, as you heard on previous presentations in this room, you can use Yocto, but in my particular case, I'm using uh, uh, the Git build system. So uh, with a powerful enough uh, computer, you can build it, cross compile it in approximately four to six hours. Then you have to, when, once you have all RPMs, you have to prepare a Kickstarter file and to create an image. The final step is to prepare a bootable micro SD card uh, with a FAT partition where you should place the Linux Sungsi kernel and uh, X4 partition for the Tizen stuff. So I would like to show you a couple of examples of device that you can create. One of the most important things in open source hardware is that this is a, a low cost opportunity to create uh, uh, prototypes and to create them rapidly. So these devices are not entirely open source hardware actually uh, because the boards are open source hardware, but here this is a Motorola lab dock. So the board is connected to this Motorola lab dock. Uh, Motorola lab dock is a project um, which is not being active anymore, but you can find uh, these gadgets in eBay in very reasonable prices. And the other thing is a homemade tablet. It, uh, it doesn't have a case. It's something that we are thinking to do next, but uh, it has a uh, display with a touch screen and a board at, uh, attached to it. So we're moving to the second showcase, and this is uh, with, uh, it's called Tizen Rock Chip. Uh, Rockchip is another Chinese company making systems on a chip. Uh, these are low cost and powerful systems on a chip. Uh, Tizen Common runs on a couple of their platforms. Uh, Erka 3188, this is for the Radha Rock, and Erka 3288 for the Firefly. 
Uh, Radharok recently became um, open source uh, hardware project. It became on my birthday at the end of October. So I decided that it's the perfect uh, perfect moment to pour Tizen to it. I had an early sample of the board uh, thanks to Tizen experts. So uh, here you can find information about the project as well as images that you can download. At YouTube there are a few uh, videos that you can see Tizen Common running on this board. I will, no, I will not go into the details about the, the process for building Tizen rock, rock chip image because it's pretty much the same procedure as for all winner devices. Uh, the difference here is that uh, there is a U-boot, but it's uh, recommended, or at least that's what I've understood, to, to use um, proprietary bootloader. So the image that is available at the moment for uh, booting Tizen Common on, uh, from microSD card on the two boards that uh, we support, uh, these two boards, are using proprietary bootloader. Uh, there is a fork of the Linux kernel again. This is a fork for the rock chip devices. Uh, for Radha Rock, we have a Linux kernel version 3.0, uh, and for uh, Firefly, we have 3.10. So it's the same procedure. Uh, the only thing that I had to fix was uh, a display uh, issue. So visit GitHub to learn details or contact me if you are interested in uh, porting Tizen uh, to rock chip devices. I'll be uh, really thankful if you have these type of devices and help me to test and expand uh, the, the port of Tizen to more devices. So this is the third um, showcase and I'm passing the mic to Philip who will explain about Minoboard Max and Intel devices. So the Minoboard Max uh, is becoming popular. I, many people also show him in a different session across them. So this is an Intel-based uh, card. It's created uh, by an American company known as Circuitco, and uh, all the design are copyleft under Creative Commons share alike license. And it's using uh, Atom A, the uh, Atom battery platform. It exists in two different versions, one with a single core and the other with a dual core. And it features uh, a fully open source mainline support GPU so this is very interesting if you look at graphics in the embedded world. You have something which is open source and already integrated into the kernel. And of course, you will have kind of expansion slots. And uh, some there are some feature which is interesting. It is a, they have some kind of daughter board you can plug on it, similarly to the Arduino shields. And uh, so this is looks like this. You can plug them over there. This one is providing uh, extra input output uh, from managing an an analog uh, in input uh, and uh, you have some other uh, kind of stuff and you can even design your own and provide them as open source hardware also. And um, for the software, as I said, um, it's supporting Linux kernel mainline. Um, the firmware is provided uh, by uh, Intel as a UEFI uh, uh, project. This is uh, one version has been released uh, just uh, f a few days ago, if I'm not wrong. And uh, Core Boot is making a lot of effort to support this board. So, if you care about openness, uh, I think this is a good uh, tar cap target. And uh, as I said, um, Tizen Common is running on it. This is one of uh, our reference device. So you have um, every feature of Tizen Common working on it. And uh, you can uh, even uh, download the image we are building every day or so every change and uh, just uh, install it to the SD card and it would boot and you get the graphics and the web, the web browser, everything is running fine. And if it's not, uh, please file a bug. And uh, you can also create, uh, your build your own image using GBS like we all explained or just uh, using uh, Yocto because this, this board has already uh, uh, support by the meta Intel layer of Yocto. So Normally there should not be some problem, but uh, if there are, this is important for us to fix it, so please report some bugs. Um, the, the small work uh, I've done on this, I, I work on the boot s system and we are using uh, EFI uh, boot, in Tizen we are using GUMI boot uh, UFI firmware to boot it. So I think we're done with the minor marks.
Uh, Minomax is a nickname of the board because the board one was a 32-bit uh, version and the second one, known as Max, is a 64-bit. So to prevent the uh, ambiguity, I prefer to call it mi Minomax because when we send in a board, people who don't know which one is it. So for the future, um, this is a community effort, so we don't have this deadline, so we are somehow comfortable, but we like to be more connected to existing community like uh, Linux, uh, all the Arduino board documentation is uh, happening over there. And uh, also to the Yocto project, which is providing support for it. Um, I may be able to show some acts uh, around uh, about uh, IoT uh, demo running on the Mino board about the high utility library, if you know about it. It will be at four o'clock in the high utility room. And I s expect this to be very popular uh, among uh, hackers, makers, or people who care about graphics because uh, the support is good. So for the future about um, this project, we probably plan to port and come on to all kinds of board. So those we are able to, to buy, actually? Uh, yes, we are interested in getting Tizen working on as many boards as possible. So um, we'll try to get it running on more ARM boards, uh, for sure. Freescale IMX6 is among our targets. Uh, Galileo 2 yeah. and uh, OMAP platforms, as well as newer models of uh, systems on the chip manufactured by Owinner and Rockchip. We're particularly interested in these devices because, uh, because of their low cost uh, prices. Um, we are facing a few challenges with the ARM devices that are related to the GPU drivers. Uh, most probably you have heard that uh, um, the majority of these drivers are uh, proprietary. Um, the boards that we support at the moment, uh, Owinner Systems on a Chip and uh, Rock Chip, are with uh, um, Mali drivers. And we are searching for um, appropriate uh, Mali driver for Wayland because Tizen Common is, uh, is relying on Wayland, although there is uh, uh, an oppor uh, opportunity to, to use it with X11, we prefer Wayland as this is the future. I uh, think we're done. Uh, uh, just to mention that we are also trying to, um, to, to get more uh, peripherals working on these devices as well because this will be a good opportunity to use Tizen in the Internet of Things. Uh, more and or more. create your own profile. It's your imagination. So let me present you. This book is was written by Leon and I re re review it. And he has a whole chapter about uh, building uh, Tizen uh, on a uh, um, it was uh, eight, eight, eight twenty, ten, twenty yeah. or eight, eight, eight ten, ten and eight, eight twenty. So there are some discount code uh, if you want to. It will work. I think so. the, the the main focus of the books the book is on application development on Tizen, primarily HTML five apps. But it's possible. Uh, uh, the, the last chapter contains information about uh, porting Tizen to different hardware. And we shared some resources for you if you want to ch later have some info point about. Uh, getting the stuff done. And now um, we are want to thank all those people. And uh, if you have some question, we can answer them now. And if you don't contact us later, we'll try to provide anything you will need. Uh, just to mention that the presentation is already available at SlideShare, so you can uh, check the links there. It will be uploaded at the FOSDEM website as well. All right. Any questions? Um, we plan, okay, I repeat the question for the, for the recording. Um, about the driver issues, the workaround could be to use uh, live libraries to rely on a uh, vendor BSP and uh, try to bind this to the software. Um, we have a different approach in the Tizen project because it is supported by hardware industry and uh, we have, um, it's, it's, uh, it's not, uh, it's a full GNU Linux distribution. We, d we don't want to rely on some hacks and uh, uh, having um, uh, a hybrid system, but uh, Selfish could be an option, and to I, I've seen some uh, proof of concept of Tizen running, not on libraries, but uh, similar kind of, uh, of uh, adaptation. If 
I don't think it it does matters for open source hardware to have uh, to rely on Android BSD. Any more question? Um, for developers to develop the apps for such board, it's important to connect uh, the debugger from the SDK or to connect the SDK using the SDB. Uh, traditionally, it is done using the USB port, but as far as I know, the Mino board doesn't has uh, doesn't have uh, the USB client. It about as a USB uh, tool, USB slot. Yep, but uh, that's uh, the USB host side. Yeah. And to connect the board to the PC, you need the USB client. Uh, I think it's possible, but uh, I will not give an answer you. I will give the microphone to the Minoboard specialist. So you are correct. The Minoboard Max does not have a USB function or OTG port directly on it. However, there is a lure in the works that has that base, uh, daisy chained off the PCI Express lanes. So it's coming. It's not out yet. I have a prototype sitting on my desk at work. So it's not just paperware. I do not have, uh, no, it, my office is in Portland, Oregon. Okay. So, <laughs> so sadly, I can't just show it to you. But it, okay. it, it is not vaporware. It is coming. Okay. I, I just wanted to add that uh, the um, smart debug bridge, which is uh, used to debug uh, um, applications on Tizen can be connected over the network. So this is also an option to, to debug it. Yes. OK, last question. Anyone? OK, thank you very much for your time. It was a pleasure. Thank you, thank you very much.